peace and love. Montague here. Hope you're doing well. Just wanted to pop in. Um, someone asked me about a relationship that they were pursuing. I said, hey, man, been pursuing this girl and, you know, knew her a few years back and we never made anything happen. And um, I've been thinking about her a lot. But when I talk to her, our values are extremely different. But the passion that we have for each other is extremely real. You know, what do I do? Like, should I just let my heart lead the way? You know, because how often are you gonna find true love in this life? How often are you going to run into someone that feels instantly like your soulmate? Someone where when you touch them, all you wanna do is be close to them. All you wanna do is love on them. You wanna buy them things. You wanna take them places. You wanna spend all your time with them. And you don't care about much else. How often does that happen? And my answer is all the time, <laughs> all the time. It's not uncommon. Uh, some people will say they've fallen in love as many times as, you know, there's been the sun goes up and the sun goes down, you know, and it's just important to know that your heart cannot be the leader when it comes to this love thing because love has many different dimensions to it okay and i like to kind of simplify it by placing them into four elements all these elements that would make a great loving relationship also they translate into other types of relationships as well but just because since we're on this topic we'll We'll keep it here. But that emotion, that love, oh my God, I wanna be with you, I wanna touch you, oh my God, all I do is think, eat, breathe, breathe and sleep you. That, to me, is the water element, okay? That is how you feel around the person and how you navigate those emotions when you're with them. But as water, as we've seen with water, it's not the most stable element that you would want to build a house upon, for example. As a matter of fact, how many houses have been broken because people chased the emotion, the very fickle emotions that come with a new partner? The very fickle emotions that come with meeting someone that you're completely, or you feel at the moment like you're completely compatible with, ignoring all types of red flags. Okay, that's our water element. Underneath that, we have our earth element. And that earth element is really practical things like money, you know? I really feel bad for when, you know, there's this whole stereotype around if a woman asks you if you have a car or, you know, how much you make and things like that, that she's a gold digger. That's crazy. Of course, that shouldn't be the only thing someone cares about, but it matters. It matters. And that is our earthly element is like our daily routines. It's going to be how do we make money? How do we manage money? You know, what kind of power do we have in the world to execute our plans and to sustain our physical bodies? And if we chose to raise kids, would there be a place for them to live? That is the earth element. Okay. So you have water, which is the emotional realm, which changes which changes how many of us have been in, been in a relationship, relationship where it's lovey-dovey and then you hate each other the next day. You know what I mean? That's the waters. 
It could flow any different direction at any given time. But the earth is stable. We've got, we gotta eat, that's something we both need. We need a place to sleep, things like that. But our emotions are gonna be doing different things all the time, okay? Let's look at the air element. The air element is how you communicate. What's your communication style? What's your love language? All these very cerebral sort of ways of trying to understand each other, whether it's through books or through trying to understand um, different types of people. You know, this also corresponds to how, how well you guys naturally just communicate um, without much effort. Um, how do you strategize to get what you want from the other person? Do you do it in respectful ways? Do you have thoughts that keep the emotions in check? Do you have those in place? Because the emotions are going to do what the emotions are going to do. You know, the emotions can be very unpredictable. Okay. That's why a lot of people, when the emotional tides sort of go down they're surprised at who they're with they're like oh my god i'm with a crazy person <laughs> you know because the emotions once again they can't lead the ship the emotions the water is a great fuel but it's a terrible foundation okay and so when we look at the the earth element it stabilizes that water element which is the emotions but then also so does the air you know how water can become very stagnant but then the air can move it about you know and keep things in motion all right that's where we go with having to have the right thought processes to recognize patterns so that we can manage ourselves okay because just because we have a place to, li place to live, we have money or whatever, doesn't mean that the emotions won't come through and flood, flood that earth, flood that house and destroy it. No, we need strategies in place. We need proven techniques. We need pattern recognition and all that comes with the air element. Okay, so we can manage our thought processes and we can self analyze because oftentimes we're moving very emotionally. We're letting the emotions drive the ship and then we create thoughts that make whatever we just did okay. I slapped her. Well, I had a troubled childhood and she made me mad. So now she knows that if she does that, she'll get slapped. It's not my fault. She shouldn't have said what she said. Wrong. Because the truth is you didn't choose to slap her. You slapped her because you were out of control and tried to create, you know? It's the same thing with people who binge shop. You know, they're just feeling bad and they just start buying things. And then they say, you know what? I deserve this. I deserve to treat myself. Da, 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 da. They create all these thoughts because the thoughts aren't driving the ship. Okay. We need to master that air element so that we can manage where that water is flowing as it goes to the earth. Okay. So that's a very important element. Are you with someone who will sit down with you, maybe even weekly, and go over challenging topics in a way where you can still walk out of that meeting and function. That is the air element. And then the last element is the fire element, which is, the, which is your vision and your passion, you know? And this is a very important one that can get lost if you let the water lead, you know? What is your passion? Is it photography? Is it Jesus Christ? Is it Ifa and the Arisha? Is it Buddha? Is it mountain climbing? What is your passion? What is that thing where you, when you first wake up, you're like, man, if I didn't have to go to work, I'd be doing this work. You know, is it working with children? You know, what is your passion? Not just what keeps you alive, not how you feel. This is deeper than a feeling. This is this is a spiritual purpose. Why are you here? Now, there's different types of people, right? So I'm not saying for everybody the same things are going to matter. But in terms of love, 
it's important for you to make sure that the right things matter. <laughs> you, know? you know, all of us are more firmly rooted as a base in one or two more than the others. Which brings up another interesting point. Sometimes you don't need what you're looking for. Because oftentimes what you're looking for is something that is you already. So if you're already really strong in these other dimensions, you might need somebody, you might need somebody stronger in another dimension to help ground you or to help make you lighter, you know, depending on where you fall on that scale. At the same time, you want to make sure that you guys are different in ways that promote health and longevity. And you want to make sure that you're the same in ways that promote health and longevity. You see what I'm saying? And oftentimes it takes humility to see where you're really at. But going into this thing, if Jesus is your main focus and the other person has no respect for Jesus, but you guys have this emotional tie, or if if one person, you know, has complete love for travel and the other person hates travel and perhaps is really needy, you know, these are things to pay attention to early on. Go through your checklist. How, how do you guys fall on the earth level, on the on the water level, on the air level and on the fire level? Do they match? You know, do they match in important ways? You know, because let's say you're passionate about writing a book. Well, you're part, you might meet a partner that's not passionate about writing a book, but she's passionate about helping you to fund your book because she's a businesswoman. You know, like you find complimentary, complimentary ways to to help each other. But if you know, but if you love, for example, if you love God and Jesus or whatever, I keep using that as an example, but you know, because I've seen this happen, you know, even in my own household, you know, I was raised by a Muslim and a Christian. <laughs> they would go at it, you know, and uh, but they had very different uh, passions and they were primarily brought together by the earth element. You know, they both um, kind of grounded each other, but they had different passions as far as their spirituality and they made it work, you know, because they were compatible on the other realms in ways that were beneficial enough for that time period. So I hope this didn't confuse you at all. <laughs> My main point here is that there's a wider view when you're choosing a partner and just going with your feelings is not enough. You could be setting yourself up for terrible outcomes, you know, tap into, don't just be in that emotional watery place, tap into your fire, you know, your spirit, tap into, you know, you got to get out of yourself, tap into the mental sphere and ask yourself, what kind of patterns does this person have? Did this, did this person cheat on their last partner? Did this person, you know, uh, does this person has a, have a terrible track record? You know, these are very important things to ask up front because people usually are what they were. Not saying in all cases, that's the way, but even if that's what they were and they're not like that anymore, it's something to take into consideration because if you don't know your history, you're bound to repeat it. All right. So if you find yourself infatuated and you don't know, but you have all these red flags, get help. Do a prayer, do a ritual, say, God, I'm under a spell, because that's what this is. Infatuation is a spell. God, I'm under a spell. Please help me to see if this is right for me. Please help me to listen to my family and friends when they tell me what's going on. Please help me not to ignore red flags when they pop up. Please give me the strength and the humility to walk away from something that I want more than anything, especially if it's bad for me. You know, and um, yeah, I'll do more on this, maybe with diagrams and, you know, this is off the top, off the top of the head, but um, it's just something I kind of wanted to get out in the universe and because uh, I know somebody needs it, you know, somebody needs this information. All right. I'm Montague. I'm out. <laughs>